Greetings, myself uh, Dr. S. Murugan, Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, School of Computing, Satyababa Institute of Science and Technology, deemed to be University. Right. So the topic of uh, this lecture is going to be PANDAS, uh, which is going to be a beginner level uh, introduction that is going to be covered in this lecture. So uh, today uh, we have been encountering so many forecasting or prediction kind of applications right now, right in front of our mobile. Starting from uh, image processing, like uh, if I take a photo, automatically our faces are uh, covered with a rectangle. So th the face detection application, that is one example. If you take uh, uh, online uh, cricket scoring, for example, right? If the teams are, when the teams are playing, we could be able to see the prediction of the team that is going to win that particular match. So based on ball to ball. Uh, you could be able to see the level of percentage of chance of winning is getting changed, right? So this high level of prediction or forecasting, right, cannot be done without the basics or with pre-processing of data or with history of related information or huge volume of data is required, right? So when that much volume of data is there, so we, we come across big data, right? So one of the implementation of those prediction, the preliminaries or the fundamentals or building up a model or cleaning the data is involved. Right? So to carry out all these things, uh, this PANDAS is going to be a useful utility, which is a part of a Python pro programming language, which is going to be an open source environment. Right? So this PANDAS is going to be an open source Python library. And it has a beautiful uh, and expressive data structures which can be uh, uh, homogeneous in case of, and can be tabular and uh, heterogeneous, or it can be multi-dimensional, right? In 2D, 3D, any type of data we could be able to easily handle with uh, pandas, right? So when it comes to uh, uh, deep learning, we come across the term vectors, tensors, right? So these data is finally granulated into two-dimensional format and those data can be manipulated with the help of this expressive nature of Pandas library. It's going to be flexible and it's pretty simple to use with simple uh, syntax and semantics. And uh, most importantly, one of the useful utility for manipulating numerical data, we have NumPy. This Pandas is built on top of NumPy library and the features of pandas it is going to we, you could be able to view the data and you could be able to inspect what are the data what type of data uh, what are the categories all those stuff can be done then you could be able to filter the data sort the data in whatever way we want ascending order descending order or based on column multi single column multiple column anything can be done we could be able to group the items right and if I have uh, two different data, I could be able to join them and combine them as well, right? When it comes to model building, we could be able to select the data, what data I need. So there, uh, when the data set is there, several irrelevant information will be there. So how to remove them or how to correct them or modify them, we could be able to do that with the help of the data selection and data cleaning process. And most importantly, pictures are worth a million words. Right? So whatever data we have, I could be able to project them or visualize them using uh, various plots and charts or using scatter graphs that is uh, widely available in Pandas. In association with uh, matplotlib, we could be able to plot a huge number of uh, chartings. Right? So how I can uh, get this Pandas? So if you want to install Pandas, you have to issue this command in your uh, uh, command prompt. Right? So you might be using some IDEs like Visual Studio Code or PyCharm or whatever it is. We have to uh, install this library uh, as an ex uh, separately. It, will, it is not uh, along with uh, Python, it is not shipped, so we have to download it uh, separately. Or if you have Anaconda, by default these libraries is already imported, so you need not uh, install. Okay? So once you install, you have to import that library in your uh, Python programming uh, file. So to import that, I need to import, it's a keyword, pandas is the library, 
uh, which I have to import and I will be giving an alias name pd. Right. Otherwise also no problem you have everywhere when you are going to use these functions you will be giving pandas dot data frame something like that. Instead if you use some alias name like this pd or any other convenient name as you like that will be more flexible. So uh, I have imported the library, uh, I have installed and imported the library. Right. So once I done that I could able to have the data in two different forms. One is series which is a single dimensional, other one is a data frame which is a two dimensional data. So let it be single dimension or double dimension, I will be having an index. So in case of series or single dimension, I have this index labeled starting from 0 to n minus 1. Whereas when it comes to data frame which is a two dimensional uh, representation, I have a row index as well as a column index. So the row index is 0, 1, 2 and 3. When it comes to column index, I have labeled them as v1, v2, v3 or v4. And if you observe this particular data, I have a character, I have a number, maybe this could be a string as well, this could be a floating value. So this could be an heterogeneous data as well. Now, uh, if you observe here, uh, 1, v3, 1, it is empty. Similarly, v4 and 2, uh, second row and column v4, it is also empty, right? So when I, uh, this is only a 4 cross 4 uh, matrix, which doesn't have much problem. Suppose if I have a huge volume of data, right? How will I identify these empty values, fine. So the first task is to identify this emptiness, second one. So if such emptiness are found, what should I do with? How will I resolve these issues? Whether I should eliminate this row or column or should I replace mathematically with some value that does not disturb the original uh, composition of this entire data. So keep this in mind. Uh, where this treatment of null values is also possible, highly possible with pandas. Now, so I have installed the library, imported the package, I know what is the type of data structure, how to do them practically, right? So here as I told you, uh, data uh, pandas are derived from np, numpy, right? So you can see np.array. So I'm going to create a numerical array with some four values, uh, 250, 750, 990, and 1010, right? So I'm creating an array and I store it in a variable data. Then I'm having an index value, 2018, 19, 20, 21, right? Instead of having the standard 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I want to give my own indexing. So if I'm not giving this index val, it doesn't matter, by default the index over here it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, right? But since I have given here some values, okay, I am getting the index values starting from 2018, 19 and uh, 2021, right? So how to associate these two things in the form of a series? That is what we are doing here, pd is our pandas dot series, data, these four values, comma, index equal to index underscore val, meaning that this is my data part and this is my index part. So if I want to access this 750, I could able to access PD series of 2019, I'll be getting that data, right? So rather than going for convenient 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I could able to access the data using some index value which has some meaning, right? So this is going to create me a single dimensional data with customized index and data. Now in a similar fashion, you, if you observe here data equal to, I'm not going to use the NP array, instead I'm going to use the array of list. So where every item contains three different data. So one is going to be 101 AM, that is serial number, name and age, right? Now uh, here, I'm going to give title equal to serial number, name and age, right? So df equal to pd dot data frame, data comma columns equal to title. Now, so this is my data and I want to label these columns with my own convention, right? So in the previous case, I could be able to label this particular 
row index. Now here I am creating a data frame which is a two dimensional data with rows and columns. So here I have the uh, three columns and five different rows and for which I am uh, creating a column headers by using this function data frame for what data. So this is my data. So there are five different lists where each list contains three items and what should be the title given to these columns is given here. Okay, And uh, if I give directly print df, it is going to give me the content. This is how I am getting the content. right? Or if you are using uh, uh, collab sort of thing, you can simply give df, I will be getting the output directly. Right? Okay. Now, I have labeled this column. Similarly, I want to label these rows. That is also possible where here I have given the row title equal to some R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. And I am creating a data frame with the data, with the columns being the column title and the index being the row title which I have declared over here. Okay. So, you can see R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 and three columns. Right? So, uh, this is how I could be able to create a series and a data frame which is a single dimensional data and two dimensional data. Right? So, now we have installed the library, we have imported the library, we could be able to how to create the data in single dimension series and double dimension data frame. Right? So, we have seen the functions series and data frame in order to create this. Like this or with this data, I could be able to manipulate with the help of these functions. Right? So, if you have a huge volume of data in the form of a CSV, those files you can import and manipulate using the function read CSV. What dimension you are importing? The file may be a 2 cross 2 or a 10 cross 2 or a n cross n. So that dimension, if you want to manipulate, I can use this function shape, right? Then, how many columns are there? The column names I could be able to fetch using this function columns. Then, uh, I want to have a sample of my data. So maybe 10 rows or 15 rows or 20 rows. I could be able to view that with the help of this function head. This is from top 10. Similarly, if I want to see the last 10 records of my data set, it is going to be tail which will be giving me the option. Then, when I am building a model, I will be getting the random or sample of data. Maybe 10 records or 1000 records or some percentage of data from the random sample if I want to pick, this function is going to help me out. Right? So, in the beginning I told you some rows and columns may not be of having any impact or important. Right? If you want to drop some columns, then I can use this function drop. Right? So, as I told you, we could be able to filter, group, sort. Right? To do those things, I can make use of this function query. I can filter out the data based on some condition or conditions. Right? It could be individual or it could be a combined or complex queries, I could be able to make it. Right? Then, I want to group based on some category. So, list all the male, list all the age group from some start age to end age. I can do that with the help of group by and do some statistical functions like average or mean or whatever it is. Right? I can insert a new column insert a new row is also allowed with the help of data frame, I can append the data. Then rank the data based on some criteria, right? Then see, uh, memory is one of the vital, uh, vital component in any system related or uh, algorithm related component. So if you want to minimize the memory usage, I can use this function memory usage. Then I have been indexing, row indexing, column indexing. If you want to access them, I have two more functions, location and I location or index based location. I could able to pull the data, maybe one row or two rows or a set of columns 
and a set of rooks all combined together, I could be able to use these functions, right? And finally, plot and scatter in as, uh, association with matplotlib, we could be able to plot beautiful graphs which gives a lot of information or prediction uh, with the help of this pandas library, right? So uh, we have the data set, we have the list of functions and how we could be able to manipulate all these things is what pandas does with, okay? So uh, these are the references that I have taken in order to prepare this presentation. So pandas is the location where we have the library. Then uh, this gives a brief introduction to pandas, how it can be used effectively. And uh, this is one of the data set which is available uh, it's open source, we can make it use for practicing Pandas with Python. And uh, this cheat sheet where you'll be getting in a single PDF all the functions related to Pandas with Python is available, right? So to conclude, we know where to import the libraries, how to use it, how to create a series, how to create a data frame, and listed out what are the functions that are available, right? And we have seen some simple examples, right? But this is not going to be the place where we are going to stop. Uh, we have so many examples related with it, and we'll be seeing those examples with live demonstration on the next set of lectures. So thank you for your patience listening.